Welcome to Lifeway. It's a joy to have you here with us tonight as we continue our Holy Week series, The Truth. Jesus is here to restore, transform and give certainty to your life. Whatever your journey has been, wherever your journey is leading you now, Jesus is the one who comes here to restore. So as we begin... Let's just stop, reflect, and let this song wash over us. There is a king seated among us. Let every heart receive him now. Where there is praise, he will inhabit. There will be grace and mercy all around. And every burden will be lifted in his presence. Every trophy will be laid down at his feet. There is a name that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. of that king and we thank you 
that you have taken that time tonight to stop, to reflect, to grasp the significance of what this week is all about. Whether you're joining us online from Illawarra, whether you're in Newcastle, whether you're out at Westside, whether you're in Cambodia or wherever you're meeting us from as part of our Lifeway family in Perth, wherever, we're really glad that you are here with us today. And for those of you who may be joining us for the first time and especially from our Chinese community as we're trialling a translation uh, thing today for the very first time, we pray that your time with us today may help you walk deeper into the life of Jesus. Your business is important to us. Have you heard that? On the phone, your business is important to us. We'll be with you very shortly. And every 32 seconds, you get the, the, the terrible music. You know, I think, Calvin, you've got to do a bit of work with them because it's just terrible what we have to listen to, only to be told, we will be with you shortly. And another 32 seconds goes. It just seems that customer service isn't what it used to be. You can't even go to a bank and get somebody to help you with a transaction anymore, or if you do, they charge you for it. You can't talk to a person, it seems, about anything that you have a problem with, and they say that our business is important to them. Well, our business may be important to them, but we're not. We are a customer number, a phone number, an email address, But the truth is you've never been a number, you've never been an email address, you've never been a means to an end for our holy God. The God of the universe in the flesh did not come to be served but to serve, to serve you, to invite you in, to wait on you, to give you what you need, even before you realise what you need. That's the truth we'll explore tonight. Jesus is servant and he's here to meet your deepest needs in his basin of grace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
seated let's pray lord god we gather tonight just as those first disciples gathered in an upper room all those centuries ago tonight oh god we remember you arose from the table to descend to the floor we rejoice that in your humility you let the things of you left the things of heaven to make a journey of love in the midst of the dirt and the dust of this world you humbled yourself by washing your disciples' feet so that they could follow you in service and love to a world which would reject you and hang you on a cross. You extended the bread and the cup to each and invited them to share in your life and the acceptance of the journey ahead. So give us the humility, we pray, that we might discover and follow your way and not our own to receive the gifts that you extend to us. On this night, you prayed for those who would come to believe through the disciples' message. Renew our enthusiasm to take up the mission that you have given to your church. On this night, you commanded your friends to love while suffering rejection yourself. Fill us with your self-giving love that we may open our hearts to be rejected and serve the unloved without counting the cost. On this night, you reminded your people that if the world hated them, it hated you first. So as we face our own fears and battles, we pray for those who are persecuted or facing battles in any way. Give us all your peace, which keeps our hearts and our minds secure. On this night, you loved your friends to the very end. Open our hearts to all who face darkness tonight. We pray for the sick, those who mourn, those who are trapped in violence, addiction or pain. Give healing and hope by your promise that your love for us is eternal. Faithful God, hear these, the prayers of your church. We offer them to you. Hear us and help us. Challenge and change us. Lead us on your way. Sanctify us by your truth, for your word is truth. Fill us with the breath of your spirit and embrace us with your life, for you alone have the words of eternal life. That's the truth we believe and proclaim in your Son, Jesus Christ, our servant King. Amen. Yes, 
It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the, go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin 
and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who, had, who have had the bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing his feet, their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, had washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set, out you, I have set you an example that you should do as what I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must have loved one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. 如遇節以前，耶穌知道自己離世歸父的時候到了。他既然愛世界，屬自己的愛世界，屬自己的人，就愛他們到底。吃飯的時候，魔鬼已將賣耶穌的意思放在西門的兒子加略人猶大心裏。耶穌知道父已將萬有交在他手裏，且知道自己是從神出來的，又要歸到神那裏去，就離席站起來，脱了衣服。拿了一根一手根束腰，然後把水倒在盆裏，就洗門徒的腳，並用自己所束的手根擦乾，挨到西門彼得。彼得對他說：主啊，你洗我的腳麼？耶穌回答說：我所做的，你如今不知道，後來必明白。彼得說：你不永不可洗我的腳。耶穌說：我若不洗你，你就與我無分了。西門彼得說：主啊！不但我的腳洗，我的頭和腳嘅手也要洗。耶穌說：凡洗過粗的人，只要把腳一洗，全身就乾淨了。你們是乾淨的，然而不都是乾淨的。耶穌原知道要賣他的是誰，所以說：你們不都是乾淨的。耶穌洗完了他們的腳，就穿上衣服，又坐下，對他們說：我向你們所做的，你們明白麼？你們稱呼我夫子，稱呼我主，你們説的不錯，我本來是，我是你們的主，你們的夫子，且洗你們的腳，你們也當彼此洗腳。我給你們做了榜樣，叫你們照著我向你們所做的去做。我實實在在的告訴你們，僕人不能大於主人，差人也不能大於差他的人。你們既知道這事，若是去行，就有福了。我赐给你们一条新命令，乃是叫你们彼此相爱。我怎样爱你们，你们也要怎样相爱。你们若有彼此相爱的心，众人因此就认出你们是我的门徒了。这是主的福音，赞美归于基督。This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Feet. Do you know the greatest resistance I reckon I've had in 28 years of ministry is when I've done a foot washing ceremony at church. It's amazing how many people do not want their feet washed. There's something about our feet, isn't there? Our feet are the dirtiest parts of our body. 
Not only do they have socks on that sweat and, and collect the grime that may be in our shoes, but they, they seem to have an odour about them that is sometimes not really pleasant. About 18 months ago, I was caring for a lady who, who had no one. She's passed away now. But she had ulcers on her feet. And she used to have the carers come in to bandage up her wounds every couple of days because they just kept on weeping. And occasionally I would have to take her to a doctor's appointment and you would have to then try and get shoes on her feet to take her to a doctor's appointment. Can I just say it wasn't really nice? Not only did the feet smell, and she was very conscious of it, but the bandages that were wrapped around because she couldn't get out to her bin just were, were piled up in her house in shopping bags all over the place. And so you can imagine what the house smelt like. But it was interesting that this was a woman that didn't just have sores on her feet that caused her to smell. This was a woman who, who had a past which also stank. And whenever you got close to her and whenever you would have conversations with her and get to a certain point in her life where you thought she was starting to open up, she would, she would push back. Because for her, her feet represented a past that she was trying to run away from. And whenever you got too close or you started to tease things out and go, hang on, I, I can't follow what happened there, she would, it's time for you to go. And you wouldn't hear from her for another while. Our feet... Our feet are the things that we look at when we feel guilty about life, when we're overcome with shame in life. Can you remember being called before the principal for something that you'd done wrong? Maybe you were all good and you never had to go to the principal, but I did occasionally. And you didn't want to look at people in the eyes, did you? When you feel guilty, when you know you've done something wrong, you look down at your feet. And you remember where you've been. And you remember what you've done. As Jesus gathers in the upper room, he sees his disciples. He sees the journeys they've been on. He sees the roads that they've followed him on. He sees their past. But Jesus is also the king who knows their future. And he knows that the road ahead is going to be tough and is going to fill them with guilt and with shame. And on that last night before he takes his final journey up the hill of Golgotha and has his feet nailed to a wooden cross. He gives his disciple a gift. And while they're arguing about who's going to be the greatest and while they're jockeying for positions at his hands, he takes the apron and kneels at their feet and takes his feet into theirs. And Peter knows that's the wrong order of things. That's not what their Lord and Master is to do. That's the job of a servant. And yet Jesus says, Peter, if I don't wash your feet... You'll have no part of me. You'll have no part of me. 
Now I want you to think about that for a second. Because just last Sunday, we heard the story about Mary washing Jesus' feet with perfume. She anoints him for the journey ahead. She anoints him for the Father's mission, the road that he will travel on. And maybe in this moment, Jesus is not just cleaning his disciples, but he's also anointing them for the mission which he is calling them to participate in. Not just to be spectators, but participants in his mission to the world. Because what does he say to them? He says, now what I have done for you, you are to do for others. You are to do for others. What has he done? He's cleaned their feet. He's removed their shame. He's scrubbed off the guilt. He's taken away the odour from whatever their journeys have been so far. And he holds those feet in his hands. And it's going to be so important for the disciples in those next moments of their life. Because there was not one person who was excluded from the foot washing. Not Peter the denier. Not Judas the betrayer. Not the rest of the disciples who were going to abandon them. Jesus washed them all and said... Your journey continues. And now what I have done for you, forgiveness, cleansing, restoration, I want you to go and do for others. You see, what Jesus enables the disciples to do, even if they can't understand it now, is to look up. They no longer have to look down at their feet. They no longer have to be weighed down with guilt and shame. They can look up and see. See Jesus and what he's about to do for them and what he will continue to do for them. They can look up and see the people around them, the journeys that they're on. And to take their feet in their hands. What will that mean for you this holy week? What does it mean to look at the people maybe who have entered your life over the last year or maybe month or week? Did you move towards them? Did you accept their journeys? wherever they had come from, whatever dirt was packed on them, or did you walk away? Because that wasn't your type of feet. Or maybe it smelled a bit much for your life and what you hold dear. But that's exactly what Jesus is calling us to. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Why? So that we could be participants in his mission to the world. Mary anointed Jesus so that he could continue his journey and complete the Father's mission. 
Jesus anoints your feet tonight and sends you out to be foot washers, feet holders, people who bring his forgiveness, his cleansing, his new beginning to others. Go and do what I have done. And when we fail, and when our heads bow down and we just look at our feet, Jesus invites us to look up, to see a love that draws all people to him, no matter what their journeys have been. no matter how much filth their life has collected. These days tell us there is a new beginning, a new journey, a journey where we can walk unencumbered with Jesus to a cross, to a tomb, and beyond to life eternal. Jesus knelt because of love. Jesus knelt because of you. He knows where you've been. He knows where you're going now. And he invites you to place your feet in his hands. Yes, it's pretty vulnerable. Yes, we may like to resist it. But in those hands is life. And because of those hands, there is forgiveness. And because he has washed you, you can step out on a journey again to fulfill the mission to which he is calling you, even tonight. That's the truth. Jesus invites you to come and place your feet in a basin of grace. And leave with him to continue your journey. A journey that he will walk alongside of you every step of the way. Amen. Let's stand as we remember why Jesus did this.
Jesus invites you to come into his presence to take off your shoes and to place your feet in his basin of grace. Let's pray. Loving Christ, on that first night long ago, you knew that your hour had come. You knew full well what lay ahead of you. Your disciples loved you and followed you, but they had also failed you. They would fail you yet again that night and one would betray you. Yet you washed their feet as a servant would, even the feet of your betrayer. We have also loved you and followed you. We have also failed you. And we can't comprehend the love that you would show us, the love that is our example, the love that tells us to do as you have done for us. And so we come before you in this time of silence to be vulnerable before you, to confess our sin to you, to hand you our dirty feet, trusting that you will forgive us. Close your eyes to my sin and wipe out all my evil. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew within me a fast spirit. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me for Jesus' sake. Amen. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. So on behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his command and authority, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take care. 
be with you thank you greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for their friends so come to the table come and taste and see the one who served us to the very end and gave up his life for us the love of God is a gift the son of God poured out for us The suffering crucified and risen Christ is present with us in bread and wine with his true body and blood. Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. We are your children who gather at your table to celebrate, remember and receive forgiveness, life and salvation. Here you pour out your love into our lives so that we can live abundantly in your presence and serve others selflessly with our lives. Our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup after the supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink of it all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, in giving us your body and blood, you enable us to remember your life, your bitter passion and death, your rest in the tomb, your glorious resurrection and ascension. We await your return. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. of you who are at home take and eat this is the body of christ given for you take and drink this is the blood of christ poured out for you 
for the forgiveness of all your sins. Tonight we're going to do communion a little bit differently. We invite you to come along the rows um, around where Amber is, um, across the front, to receive the body of Christ from Francis. And then you can either uh, drink from the common cup, intinct into the common cup, or go to Mary for the individual cup. As you come forward, look at your feet. Look at where your journeys have been and maybe even where you think your journeys are going. And bring all of those to the altar today. Bring all of those to Jesus and know that he is here to cleanse you, to forgive you, to give you strength for the journey for which he is calling you to go on. Come, for all things are now ready.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most holy and precious blood. Strengthen and preserve you in body and in soul to life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Let's pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, for you have served us with the body and blood of your Son, whom you love. As we go out to do as he has done, give us your grace to count others more important than ourselves. Send the Spirit of truth to keep alive in us what Jesus taught and did, that our words may carry his good news and our lives may bear the shape of his cross. Empower us by your Spirit to pour out our lives for others with the same self-giving love you have shown to us. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Stay here and keep watch with me. The hour has come. Stay here and keep watch with me. Watch and pray. Stay here and keep watch with me. The hour has come. Stay here and keep watch with me. Watch and pray. Stay here and keep watch with me. The hour has come. Stay. to the disciples and said to them are you still sleeping and resting look the hour has come and the son of man is delivered into the hands of sinners rise let us go here comes my betrayer stay here and keep watch with me the hour 
stay here and keep watch with me. Watch and pray. Stay here and keep watch with me.